So today we're going to put, uh, we're going to install the front set of tire blocks in a, uh, this tire here is a, uh, a Maxxis Razor 2 21710. Um, pretty simple process. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, what, you know, the, the tire blocks are going to come with a, an 8 ounce bottle of uh, silicone um, like this. Um, you can ap apply it with this bottle um, here at the shop just for ease of use and speed use a, a brush in a bucket um, just lube the inside of the tire up real good make sure you get uh, all the sides this will help uh, keep the heat down keep the blocks from uh, prematurely deteriorating once you get that done start with uh, all the blocks same process just I use a brush um, Brush the, uh, the lube on all the sides and install it. So you have your first block in. Continue the process until all of them are lubed and installed. Sometimes you'll notice when uh, you get the blocks, sometimes they're white, sometimes they're black. Um, there's no difference. Uh, it's just a color option. Sometimes we like to uh, just switch it up a little bit so it's uh, a little different, a little entertaining. This tire will take um, roughly 14 to 15 blocks. Just kind of depends on um, when and where the tire was manufactured, I guess. Some tires are different than others. Um, there's a little bit of inconsistencies, even with, uh, you know, the higher end tire manufacturers. Um, I'm sure it's just a, a batch deal. Not a huge deal. Sometimes you just got to add an extra block or um, not add as many blocks. And this is a, a pure silicone. Um, it's not a uh, bunch of chemicals mixed together to make a lubricant. It's more or less all natural to food grade um, silicone. So if you want to wear rubber gloves, that's great. It's not going to hurt your hands. It's not going to give you any kind of crazy chemical burns or, or anything weird like that. It's completely safe. Sometimes when you get to the end here, the blocks start getting a little harder to put in. Feels like we may be only getting 14 in this one. stick your hands inside, kind of spread the blocks out with your fingers. Sometimes you can start with the, the narrow side of the block, get it started, spin it in there. Just rotate it back to its correct position. Okay. So we'll get one more. That's 14 currently, so this is the 15th. We'll go ahead and lube this one up. Set it aside right here. We'll use the, uh, the spreader plates that uh, are available from us. Go ahead and install the backside. First one, use the threaded rod. Make sure you put a little bit of grease on the threaded rod. Start it. Go ahead and hold it down. I just hold it down. Looks 
expand it out enough, set the last block inside here. Pull the plates back out. There you have it. All the blocks are installed. Um, now it's time to install the wheel. So this part of the process, we're going to install um, this small plastic tube that's supplied with the kit um, and through the side of the valve stem. Um, this will allow air to exit the, the wheel and tire um, in the event that the block covers the, um, the end of the valve stem and blocks it off. I like using a, uh, a device, it's, it's a, a pin vise um, with a 16th inch um, drill bit that uh, you'll need to supply, um, get them anywhere. So just slide the, uh, the tube over the, the drill bit and just go into the side of the valve stem inside. Sometimes it takes a little work. Push it all the way through both sides. Sometimes you need to come back. I take a, uh, I use a pair of uh, pointed side cutters cut the uh, center of it out and I just push it out a little bit and just cut off cut off the edges so you end up with a, two little small pieces of tube so that the air can cross through the side if the block covers the end so you can still get air out of, out of the, the tire. So this part of the process, after you get the blocks installed, we'll put the wheel in, um, make sure that it's clean, uh, get all the excess silicone lube off of the wheel and tire. This will make it go a little easier. If you get too slick, um, the wheel wants to just keep popping out and you're just chasing it. Uh, makes it pretty challenging. Sometimes if you got a second guy to help you, this helps as well. Um, I prefer a short tire iron. Makes it a little bit more difficult, but uh, less, uh, less cumbersome than the, uh, the big one. So, I'm going to jump up on the table just because typically do this on the floor. Just put my knee inside the wheel and just uh, start working it. There it is. Wheel started. We got the valve stem modified. So now we're ready to pull the wheel um, through the foam. This is the part where everybody has a question. How do I do that? How does it get through there? Um, the foam's pretty pliable. It moves around quite a bit. Um, there's a, a couple different options. Um, different methods. Some people like the cone. Um, some people don't like the cone. Um, so this part of the process, we're actually going to show just the halo without the cone. Um, so first part is uh, the the wheel adapter, the base plate um, threaded. It's got nuts on it for a couple different bolt patterns. Um, I just put the uh, the bolts in there, set it up inside the inside the wheel. Take a couple lug nuts to hold it on. Put it back down flat. 
set the halo on here, make sure that you've got a, uh, at least one washer on it. Make sure that you grease the threaded rod so it doesn't seize up in there and bind up. Go ahead and start it. I use a cordless impact. Sometimes if you're doing this, if you have the, the means, you can put a hole in your workbench or use it on a, a stand that's got a hole in the center so the threaded rod will go through. Um, I'm going to hold it here on its side um, so you can see it. Take the adapter plate off. Set your tools aside. And there it is. Now all we gotta do is get the uh, second half of the bead on the wheel. So we're at the point now where uh, with this front, this is a, uh, a Maxxis 21 inch uh, 21 by 7 front tire. Um, all that's needed now is to uh, get the second set, the second side of the tire mounted on the wheel, uh, which will be done on a tire machine. That's the uh, the easiest, most effective way to do it. Um, to do it manually uh, with a pair, set of uh, tire irons or spoons um, is extremely challenging. So if you do attempt that, just make sure you've got uh, a second set of hands to help you out. Uh, but it's doable, just very challenging. Um, with other tire sizes, uh, be aware that uh, um, the larger UTV stuff um, and ATV stuff uh, does get a little bit more challenging than this, um, especially if the foam is a, uh, a denser foam like we use in the UTVs. And uh, a beadlock, obviously, at this point, uh, you'd bolt the ring on and you'd be done. So here we are. We got the blocks installed. Everything's done. Um, we're going to mount the second half on this tire machine. This stuff all um, pretty much is the same uh, method. Uh, no matter what size tire it is. Uh, obviously the bigger the stuff, sometimes a little bit more challenging. Um, pretty standard stuff. This machine um, pretty much like anything else anybody's got in the shop. So um, just pull the bead down into the uh, drop zone of the wheel. Get your tires set. Sometimes you gotta pry the uh, tire around the, uh, the head here, get it started properly. And just hold it down as you follow it around. And there it is. Remove it and set the bead.
Filling the bead, same process on this with the blocks. Sometimes, some tires, it may take a little bit more pressure um, just because the, uh, the block is actually trying to hold the tire in there and, the, and where it belongs. Fill it up to your uh, desired tire pressure. In our situation, it's uh, six pounds is what we're going to run. And uh, there you have it. You're done.